All right, let's go dirty together. I mean dirty and dusty here on this little robot. And for that we can use here another material. Let's make a bit of space here. Copy paste. And we can call this one dirt. Dirt, yeah, dirty. Rawr. We need the merch node, multi channel merch, yes, Arnold, please. And wire it up. Yes. <laughs> it's actually a very good start here. Here we go. Um, we don't start with a paint node because we want to mask it out with the ambient occlusion. And I will show you here two ways how you can import some actual data which comes from another bake engine as an example. And you have two options. And option one is here under the object. You have here this little drop down called geo channels and geo channels are basically a container for data and to load some data in we can click here on this i button and navigate to our folder which is on my desktop here the mari robot textures and bakes and then we can simply choose here the ao your utility raw because we want the raw data and import patches so now we have it here in the geo channel which we can rename to ao and if we drop here a node called geo channel and look through by pressing to the keyboard you can see nothing is in here but we can now choose here the ao and here we have the data so the cool thing about geo channels is we have one place where we can replace the data or the maps and it will update everywhere in the node graph. But there is another option where we can import some data and that's by pressing P on the keyboard. 4K, yes, okay, scalar. So now here on the paint node we can go for right click, file, import and import it here into the paint node. You can do that with textures, um, whatever you like. We can look through it and it looks the exact same. So the difference is the paint node approach is a bit lighter to calculate for the GPU. While here the geo channel refer is referencing here to the location where we have loaded it in. But it's a bit more flexible. So if you maybe have the, the case where the AO bake will change, then I definitely recommend you use the geo channel because you just have to replace it there and it will update everywhere. While on the paint node approach, you have to go on every paint node and do a right click and import it again. So you have these two options. For now, I think we can go for the geo channel just because we can. So now we want to create a mask for our dirt and the dirt is most of the time collected a bit in the in the occluded area and here that's displayed in black we can invert the mask just that it makes a bit more sense so now wherever it's white there will be some dirt collected we can also insert here a levels node to grade it a bit to uh to a point which we like by playing around here on the midpoint Okay, so now a merge node to break it up with some texture madness. Mm, which one could work? I mean, we can try this one, why not? And here, switch to overlay. And let's see what we are getting here. I think we can crunch it a bit. Levels. I really like the levels node, it's just so handy. You could do the same with a, with a great node or with the brightness lookup node, which is basically a, a curve, which you maybe know from uh, Photoshop. 
Let's switch here to clamp to output and crunch it. I think we can tile it a few times. Maybe three. Mm, why not? It doesn't look too bad to me. Ah, oh, really, really nice how it breaks it up here. I think we can crunch it even a bit more. So dust and dirt doesn't need to have a super hard edge. It can fade out a bit. It's like some some dust which is slowly fading out. If you will do some rust like here, you definitely need a hard edge like like this one here. Then you you need a hard edge, but we are doing some some dust dirty stuff, so that's that's fine with a bit fading. So we can make it a bit more uneven with add another merge node and insert a cloud. It's actually a uh, noise. Hook it up here as well. Go for overlay. And adjust here a bit the size. We can crunch this one here as well. You can also put the noise here in front of our texture, which gives you a slight different result. It's up to you. You can play around as much as you like. Now we can see it. It gets a bit stronger here, while here we are losing a bit of, of dirt. We can also adjust the size a bit. Just to, to break up a bit the uh, procedural look and get a bit more unnatural feeling here. Adjust it here. And hook it up to see what we are getting. Yeah, come on, go. And that's where we are. Let's color here um, the dirt that we can actually see a bit better what we are doing. I like to tint it into a red because I don't have that much red assets, so it's a bit easier to see. You can choose whatever you like, you can also go for pink. That doesn't look too bad to me. Maybe here it's a bit, yeah, procedural-like. We can break this up very easily. Adding another merge node here. And a paint node with an alpha of, of zero. Hook it up here. Not into the base. That's the wrong one. We need to over it here. And you can leave it at all as normal because it has an alpha of zero, it will do nothing. So you can see it's still the same. Then we can go for our nice organic brushes here, the T-Rex one. It's actually a super dope brush here. And we can decrease it here a bit with a black color here on the side. bake here on the fingers as well it doesn't make too much of sense i always start procedural with such masks then i add some hand painted uh, breakups on top of that on areas which it makes sense So we have the fingers a bit more clean, because he's using his fingers all the time. So there it won't collect that much of dust and dirt. Maybe dirt if he's working in the garden and he's gardening for you, then yeah, of course, there will be some dirt. But that's another case, which we don't have here. I really like how it looks so far. 
So let's add a backdrop. Call it dirt. Organize it a bit here. As I like to say, I want to hold my mask data over the merge, merge node. And now we can start tweaking here our dust and dirt. So let's have a look for a nice color. I think something brownish. Not that super saturated, just a bit here. Oh, you can't move it. Let's have a look here. Yeah, maybe we can go a bit more and the brightness here, just to have it as a subtle effect here. And dust and dirt is most of the time more rough. Maybe something like that. Now we can see how it breaks up here, the reflections, which is actually pretty cool. Yeah, I really like how it looks like here. So for the bump, we want to have it actually following our surface. So we can simply delete it. So it will follow then the bump, which is underneath. We can also mix. No, let's let's leave it as it is, so we don't have to go super crazy here. I think we can decrease it here a bit. Don't like it that much how it's collected here. Just decrease it a tiny bit. I mean, that's that's anyway. Again, here's such a case where you can spend as much time as you like to bring it even further. I'm here to uh, teaching you the tool and some techniques and it's up to you to refine it on your end and integrate it into your workflow which makes sense for you. That's just how I'm doing it here. It's actually pretty cool so far. But yeah, that was the dirt tutorial. On the next one we will start with some hero, hero breakups and hero paintings. So see you then, bye bye.